Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, July 6th. Thank you so much for joining in to our weekly healthcare reform webinars. And uh, I trust everyone had a great holiday break and spent some time with the family. Um, I, I believe the, uh, the legislators in Washington also took some time off, so there's not tons of stuff happening, not, not uh, you know, any big bill movement, um, but there are a lot of little things going on that could certainly affect um, what this law, what health, <laughs> health law will, will do. Um, for those of you that are new to this format, my name is Deb Wilkinson, and I'm the Vice President of the Health Plan Options Department here at URL. And uh, my duties uh, include overseeing the group health market, either self-insured or uh, fully insured, and then, of course, oversight of what is left of the Pennsylvania individual health market. Um, Short-term medical certainly is becoming very popular in this, uh, this uh, special enrollment period. Um, but again, th that's who I am. And if you, if you uh, have questions, we designed these webinars to ask questions in a, in a couple different ways. Um, you can raise your hand icon on the control panel to the right of your screen, or you can type in your questions in the question box, and I'll answer those at the end of the webinar. So hopefully you have a lot of questions for, formulated. Um, just with a show of hands, if you could just raise your your electronic hands and let me know if you can see my screen and hear me okay, I'd appreciate it. Great, looks like they, uh, there are some hands going up, perfect. So I wanted to just start out with um, the new segment, the new administration. This, uh, the PA legislation, it, it is specific obviously to Pennsylvania. There are two bills that are, are of interest to those that work in the health insurance market. And the first is the Surprise Balance Bill Protection, House Bill 1553. And essentially, I think we've all had clients or personally experienced going into a, a network hospital or network provider, having some lab tests or anesthesia um, sent or performed by a non-part provider and having surprise out-of-network balance billing. This happens uh, in an emergency situation as well. So this bill is going to take care of that and uh, not allow for those balance billing, uh, which would benefit all of us. The second is um, <clears throat> the reappropriation of the uh, PHC4, which is the Pennsylvania Health Care Cost Containment Council, and they're going to reauthorize it, or the, the bill is expected to reauthorize this important service. And this this um, service actually takes all of the network hospitals and, I'm sorry, all the Pennsylvania hospitals and kind of does a comparison on readmission rates, uh, infection rates, uh, mortality rates. So it kind of gives consumers one place that they can go and see the success rate of a particular hospital's, um, you know, for, for performing some sort of surgery. So it is an important measure. Of note, Governor Wolf is hoping that the um, PHC4 is going to be a place where consumers can, as we move forward, um, go to have one place to look at all of the data. So it is. It does seem like something that, um, you know, obviously is going to be useful if more if more folks took advantage of it. So those are that's what's going on in, on in Pennsylvania. Um, there was uh, on the federal level, the House Committee on Appropriations drafted a provision that would stop the IRS from enforcing the individual mandate. This is separate from the Senate or the House bill. And basically, the appropriation for the IRS is for their fiscal year starting 10-1. And this, this bill is um, basically says any of the money appropriated to the IRS cannot be used to enforce the individual tax penalty mandate. So that could be very interesting uh, to see how that shapes 2018 or if it even passes. But it does seem to be gaining a lot of traction and approval. Part of the draft also includes language to remove the requirement for employers to provide the names and social security numbers of those provided uh, with health insurance. 
So again, that this that takes care of kind of the employer's reporting on on who they're offering coverage to, and that's another part of the enforcement of the individual mandate. So again, it, it's gaining some traction. It's outside of the House or Senate bill, and uh, looks like you know it it, it could get through. Um, you know, I, I, a few weeks ago on the webinar, I mentioned that there was a letter from our Pennsylvania Insurance Commissioner, uh, Teresa Miller, uh, that was written to um, CMS basically saying that the Pennsylvania insurance companies are committed to the market. However, any change in le legislation could change that commitment to the market. Um, she went on to mention that if the government did not uh, continue with cost share reduction payments, that that would adversely affect the insurance carriers and and could possibly uh, eliminate some of the the options for Pennsylvania insureds and raise rates by 20.3 percent. Now the cost share reductions um, are kind of put within both within the House bill and the Senate bill in the form of the stabilization funding. So it's kind of just a new name for an old controversial. Um, aspect of ACA, but so I'm not too worried about that cost share reduction not being in any of these bills. But if the mandate goes away, again, there's you know that's that's good news for free Americans. Um, however, there is an adverse effect, and the insurance commissioner mentioned that the rates without an individual mandate could increase by 23.3 percent. So again, you know, cause and effect. If the mandate goes away. Um, then the carriers have to make sure that enough insureds are going to be coming into their system and enough premium dollars are going to um, be there. So again, it's who knows what will happen, but I thought it was important to, to let you know of this latest update. What's happening with the uh, Better Care Reconciliation Act, the Senate bill, um, not a whole lot that I've seen. Of course, you know, everyone was on recess um, or, or vacation. But there's a new, <clears throat> a new proposal being uh, bantied around by Senator Ted Cruz, basically proposing that insurers could sell whatever they wanted as long as at least one of the plans offered complied with the Affordable Care Act. So that's a, an interesting take, basically skirting again the, um, the metal level requirements and the ACA requirements. So again, this may give insureds the ability to be a little bit more creative. Will this happen for 18? Probably not. Rates and plans and everything have already been filed. Um, but it is interesting and it's gaining um, a lot of support. Senator Mike Lee, uh, Representative Mark Meadows of you know the, the Freedom Caucus is gaining, you know, actually endorsing it and saying that they would support such a, a bill. So again, it, 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 Rand Paul a couple weeks ago basically said that the only way to get this BCRA through is to split it up, do two separate bills, one that <clears throat> the conservatives could agree on and one that the Democrats could agree on. <clears throat> but it looks like they're you know, kind of separating it a little further and just kind of getting through what they can get through. Um, which is an interesting way to approach it. Um, of course, I'll keep you up to date with whatever I find out. Um, so moving on to our agenda, the, I did mention the IHC short-term product. There were, were new rates as of last Friday um, for effective dates of 7-1. If you're using the enrollment links, you don't have anything to worry about. However, if you do use the paper applications, you'll want to make sure you have the most updated paper application with the most updated rate. Um, I mentioned last week about the Capital Blue Cross. They were offering a premium holiday, $100 per enroll, if they switch from a calendar year uh, deductible to a contract year plan. And what I did find out is there is no deductible credit. That was a question that was asked um, last week. No deductible credit. It's going to be a one-time only option to um, coordinate their renewal date with their deductible reset date. And I was told that um, they, they're going to be offered for the October, November, December renewals for 2017. But next year, if they don't take advantage of it this year, just switching them up so that they um, coordinate, 
then they're going to be forced to do it next year without any premium holiday. So I would strongly urge you to, to consider with your 10-1 renewals, 11-1 and 12-1, making sure that they butt up against the, the renewal date and the deductible reset date. Um, speaking of Capitalu Cross renewals, uh, there were some issues on Capital's end where they sent some of the October renewals to the wrong agent and or the wrong general agency. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a mess. We know that. And um, we did get all the 10-1 renewals out for capital. So if you do have some 10-1 renewals that you are missing, please let your uh, new business specialist know uh, so we can get those for you. Um, they switched systems. And it, you know, there's a lot of things that went into why this happened. but. Uh, Unfortunately, we have no control over it, but we can at least track down any renewals that you are missing. So let us know. Uh, when writing new business with capital, we are strongly suggesting that you send in the eGEMS paperwork. It's just going to be beneficial for everyone. It allows us to um, really do those terms, additions, et cetera, more, more effectively and uh, correctly. And there's never a question that it's being done. So um, with your new business or renewals, we're going to be sending out that eGEMS paperwork. Hopefully, you'll take advantage of it and get those completed as well. Um, for those of you that are still doing your training for the FFM, the 2017 FFM training is going to be re removed from the testing site on July 21st. Of course, this is just in preparation for the 2018 testing. But for those of you that have not done that yet or want to do it and just kept putting it off, now's the time. Uh, the 21st, it will be removed. And any 2017 FFM business that is paying commission renewal or new business um, that you wrote would not be commissioned if you don't ultimately do your, your 2017 FFM training. I don't think it applies to many on this call, if any, but uh, at least wanted to let you know the deadline. August 23rd, um, holding an Eggs and Issues uh, 2CE seminar here at URL. It's going to be on the top 10 items to review for healthcare reform compliance. So I think it's timely. I think it's going to be certainly worth your time out of your office during a busy time um, and, and very informative and giving you, again, more, uh, more ammunition to go into your clients and uh, you know, secure that, that relationship once again. Um, and also, last but not least, don't forget to register for the Medicare Connections or your Leaders Conference. Medicare Connections focuses on the 2018 Medicare products. There are carriers that will give you a, a sneak peek at their products, and that's on September 6th. And then the Leaders Conference is for those that want to learn more or focus on all of the other product lines, health, disability, life, um, annuities, uh, etc. So. It's a two-day event. You can register for one or both days, and I hope you take advantage of it because um, they're, they're always well worth your time out of the office, and it's a lot of networking and uh, information being uh, given out as well. So hopefully you can make it. <clears throat> that brings us up to the open forum. And while you are formulating your questions, uh, just know that next week, July 13th, I'll be back here at 930 with hopefully more information for everyone. All right, so let's see what kind of questions we have. Um, Dave asks where we get the eGEMS forms. They're on our website, Dave, but we can get those to you. And Dave asks if we are also going to send invitations to the 823 seminar. Yes, every week, every Tuesday, you get an email with all of our upcoming events. In that is my weekly uh, webinar uh, registration and all the other webinars or seminars taking place for other departments. It also has the Leaders Conference registration, Medicare Connections, and then the registration for August 23rd. Mike says, PA proposed legislation to allow insurance agents to charge a fee to write individual health. Any info on the status of the bill? No, I have no information on that yet, Mike. Last, uh, I think two weeks ago or even last week, it was being introduced by Mario Scavello, 
um, and uh, he was getting, we, we were trying to get co-sponsors. Um, there were some co-sponsors, but I'm not sure if the bill has been introduced. I will find out for you, Mike, and get back to you and also update everyone next week on it as well. Um, all right, well, that looks like the end of our questions. Not many today, and there is, I think, a person with a hand up. Let me see if we have questions. Nope, no questions. All right, so, um, you know, as always, I thank you for joining in. I did include the uh, healthcare law comparison chart as well, again, so it compares the ACA to the AHCA to the BCRA. Um, so I think that's a good resource for you. And, um, you know, that's about it. We'll be back here on Thursday the 13th. And as always, I truly appreciate everyone joining in. Keep your questions coming. And I wish all of you a great balance of the week and a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.